Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Um, tonight, I, I wanted to do it a little bit differently, okay? Uh, I kind of want to reverse engineer. Uh, usually what we talk about uh, is the macro market, kind of a little bit of a lesson, and then we kind of move on to, you know, to day's events and blah, 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 some of the pivots when we look for it uh, tomorrow. I, I want to kind of reverse engineer that, okay? Um, I want to start out. I want to start out with the pivots that we had today, okay. But the most important part is, you know, I'm not here to celebrate process that works, okay. Our job as professional traders or or aspiring professional traders is try to figure out where our imperfections are. And try to to do our best. Again, we're not hum, you know we're not perfect human beings. We'll never be perfect traders. Uh, as I said today uh, in the live webinar, we will never be uh, perfect parents or perfect spouses or perfect brothers or sisters. Uh, so there, there's no way we're going to become perfect traders. But we try as a community. When I say community, I mean all of us. If I've never met you before and you're clicking a mouse, you're part of the global trading community. So we're not here to celebrate small victories. We're here to try to figure out what our imperfections are and make them better. And again, if you look at the feed today, uh, again, if you look at the Twitter feed today, it's all fine, right? It, it's all fine. And there's a, there's a specific reason, and I'll share you guys in, in, a, uh, in, a, in a moment what I'm talking about. So if you look at the pivot feed today, again, macro market is strong, yada, 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 market goes up every single day closes at the lows and then gaps back up and has been doing that for a long time. We covered this in nausea. We're here to speak from the trader's point of view and what we go through uh, every single day together. So if you want a full roundup uh, on what the daily's events, go to CNBC, go to a million different financial websites. They will give you the same blah, 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 talking heads. We're speaking from the trader's point of view, good, bad, and different. It's all here, right? It's all here. So if you look at the feed today, Everything was fine, right? Everything was fine. If you traded today, these aggressive pivots, that's great. If not, it's great as well. Again, BYND, and again, big, big flush towards the end of the day, 17, uh, 17, 1680, if it builds below, can flush. And again, you can see what happened here. I'll show you here in a second. Again, not, not the point, not the point of the video tonight, not the point. So here's the video, right? Here's the 17, the 17 area. It flushed down, blah, 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 right? Nobody cares, okay? Uh, Tesla, we'll get to that in a second. That's the one I kind of want to cover, okay? Um, if you look at NOW, big move. Still like it for tomorrow. Uh, 347, 348. Uh, needs a strong build to finally bust out of this channel. Again, we saw in the morning buyers came in uh, for the 355 weeklies. And again, strong move. You know, very, very strong move. Uh, built 47, built 48. Uh, went to like 50 and change. I still like it. I think uh, the stock you know, has a shot at the 52-week highs, 56, maybe ultimately to 60. That was fine, right? Good job for all you guys who took that as well. Uh, Netflix was actually some pretty good bounce spots today all over the place. It's still trading very, very thin, but some good rebound bounce spots. We had two or three of them today uh, in the live webinar, including the one uh, that did go from that 380, uh, 379 area. It broke out pretty well. Again, here was Netflix. Right, we talked about that 378 and a half, 379 level. You know, it went to like 81 and change. Uh, so that was fine. Alibaba, by far the biggest move of the day. Uh, 2190.22 needs to reclaim. Right, Alibaba. Right, here's the 2190. Right, here's the 2190. Uh, 222 area just exploded. Right, absolutely exploded. That was fine. Nobody talking about that. Uh, and Akami, 101 needs to build again. Akami right off the gate. You took this trade, great job. Here's the 101, right? 101 exploded to 103. That was fine, okay? Everything's all good. Uh, BYND, small move off the reverse pivot, 19 to 19 and a half, really doing anything. Really didn't do anything. Only went up like 50 cents or so. Blah, 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 blah. Shop, it keeps on, oh, here's the big one. Here was the big one. Uh, here's the ranges, right? Here's the ranges. 
uh, shop ranges for the rest of the day. They came out earnings, got faded for the whole day, literally for the whole day. And it was only a matter of time. Is it going to lose the bottom range? Is it going to get above the, the middle range? What's going to happen? So we talked about 557 to the upside, 548 to the downside. Both need to build. And shop got destroyed, right? Absolutely destroyed. There was nothing even come close. Here's the 548 right here. 548, right? 548. And this thing got just destroyed. Went down, you know, went down nearly 20 points. Let's forget about all that, right? Let's forget about all that. I posted, you know, I posted um, a question on Twitter, okay? And for all you guys who are uh, watching this video, usually, usually I'm not the, the whole big, you know, comment on the, you know, on the video below. But I want to hear your thoughts, right? I want to hear your thoughts about uh, a, a subject that I'm very, very interested in tonight. And the question that I asked was, what's more mentally exhausting? Okay, let's take the money aspect out of this. Okay, we're talking about strictly mental equity. What is more mentally exhausting? Okay, watching an A plus setup, okay, for two, three days, it could be two, three weeks, whatever the case may be. It's a setup that you're comfortable with, you're ready to trade, you're ready to go, right? Having an A plus setup, you watched it for days and then it explodes to the upside without you or implodes to the downside without you, whatever, whatever the direction is. Okay. Is that more mentally disturbing? Is it more uh, exhausting than right? Then having the same a plus setup, right? The same a plus setup, you collected the data, you watch the trade, you watch the order flow, you watch the option activity, you collected all the data, take the trade, with conviction, have the trade fail, right? And the worst part of it is not the monetary aspect of losing money on the trade. The question is, is it worse mentally to take a trade and miss it or to take the trade, lose money on the trade and not understand why, okay? And here was what I wanted to talk about today. So. We watched Tesla for several days, okay? If you watch Tesla, forget about the Forbes article. The Forbes article is irrelevant, okay? The last several days, it was building a base down here. Now, again, before anybody turns around from the perma bear side of Tesla and say, well, Dan, it's a piece of shit. That's why I fit. Okay, settle down. Okay, settle down. Stock went up 300 points in two weeks. Settle down. We're not talking about that. We're talking about it from the trading aspect of it. So let's talk about the data, right? I usually collect data. I have an opinion. I have a bias. And I try to strike with extreme prejudice, right? So we started collecting data, right? So Tesla was trading in a 60 minute channel for four days, right? You can see it going all the way back to four days. And the top of this channel kept on getting rejected, right? And the top of this channel was uh, 786, 786, 786, 786, right? You get the theme, 786, 786, 786. Yesterday, right, as the market started selling off on the lows, we started watching really good amount of aggressive call buyers come in, okay? Now, this is obviously not the whole tally, but we started seeing, as the market was selling off, buyers coming into the stock, right? The weeklies, the 845 weeklies, the 845 weeklies, the 845 weeklies, we saw the 850 weeklies, we saw the 900s, right? February 900s. This is all happening at the same time. And it's not like they're sitting there. It's not like they're sitting there putting up $10,000 bets, $5,000 bets. I mean, you can see, and again, if you go through yesterday's activity in the options market of Tesla, you'll see some pretty aggressive call buying. It was like the aggressive call buying going on in Amazon before the big run. You just had the big, big run in Tesla. So I knew it held the bottom of the range, right? I knew it held the bottom of the range for three or four days. I knew the top of the range. I knew there was massive call buyers come in towards the end of the day. I knew there was a divergence from the market selling off yesterday and Tesla getting stronger. And I also knew that there is going to be a very, very high probability that if Tesla didn't gap up, right? If Tesla didn't gap up above the range, and now it's tanking here. Um, but if, if Tesla didn't gap up above the range, I had what we call an A plus setup, multiple day, three, four day setup top of the range, bottom of the range, define option flow, speculation money, hot stock. It's all good, right? It's all good. Here's the problem, right? A lot of times, a lot of times as a trader, okay, 
you are going to be put in a situation that no matter what type of trader you are, you could be the most aggressive trader in the world or you could be the most conservative trader in the world. Okay. The one thing that eventually you have to do, okay, is shoot your shot. Is shoot your shot. It's, it's the most, like again, Derek Jeter is not going to the Hall of Fame for hitting, you know, 500, 600 home runs. He's going to the Hall of Fame because he has 3,500 hits. But once in a while, he will take a step back, right? Take a step back, understand the game flow situation, you know, squeeze the bat a little bit tighter, right? And trying to launch it. Once in a while, you have to do that. And the problem with the stock market, because it's an unscripted filter of the greatest reality show that's not on television, once in a while, you when you take that shot, you are going to miss, okay? And unfortunately today, I missed, okay? And I missed pretty aggressively, okay? Um, and the one thing that I kept on, you know, at, you know, sitting there for two, three hours, looked at all different time frames, looked at, you know, the five minute, the three minute, the, the 10 minute, the 15, 20, 30 second time frame. I couldn't figure out what I did wrong in the trade. I just couldn't figure out. Again, the stock sucks, man. Okay, that's great. And maybe it does suck and maybe the bear's gonna get paid. That's great. We're not talking about the stock sucks, man. We're talking about why the trade didn't work. And I sat there for the majority part of the day, okay, um, really frustrated, not because I lost money on the trade, okay? I was properly sized. I knew my risk parameters. We talked about it, you know, I talked about it uh, at Morning Strategy. They said, hey, this is not a trade for everybody. I wanna make sure that if you are trading this thing, you're an experienced trader, new traders stay the hell away, it's not for you. So I got that part. I was teared up right. Uh, I knew the risks, all that good stuff. I knew how aggressive it was going to be. I knew all that stuff. The problem was I don't know why it fails. So my question is, again, to the, to the room, right, to the, to the gallery, to all you good folks out there, is it much more, right, is it much more uh, mentally frustrating to miss a trade that you wanted or is it much more mentally frustrating taking the trade you wanted, having it fail, and again, you cannot have an answer why it did so and it makes you much more frustrated because there's nothing to be learned from this trade, right? I would have taken this setup a hundred times, including Saturday and Sunday, okay? So I'm trying to figure out why it failed and it's so frustrating because I have no idea what I did wrong. And again, this is one of those situations that you take the trade, you live with the, you live with the reality, right? You take the trade, you live with the reality and sometimes you have to just chalk it up of, you know what? things happen, right? Things happen, but it's very frustrating. Uh, I'm a human being just like everybody else. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, look, I have 20 years of screen time, okay? Once in a while, you're gonna get a trade and you can't figure out why. And it took me, you know, it took about eight bucks out of me, right? It took back, it, it took $8 out of me. It's a pretty decent nut. Um, and maybe, you know, I made back some money with uh, shop, blah, blah, blah. But the point is I couldn't figure it out. And the one thing that I, I do know, no matter what type of day I'm having, good, bad, or indifferent, the one thing that I know is how quickly you need to forget about it. Again, this is me venting. This is my process. I can only vent to other traders. Nobody wants to hear it in my house. My wife sure as well doesn't want to hear it in my house. My kids are not mature enough to understand what, even what the hell I'm talking about. My dog, maybe my dog, maybe Ivy, right? I'm sure so she doesn't want anything except for a belly rub. So the point is, the more important part is we need to communicate as a global community and help each other out because again, nobody cares about this stuff but us. So short memory, right? Short memory, frustrating, absolutely. I'm still gonna probably think about this for the next two, three hours, but again, tomorrow's a new day, new chapter, new players, life goes on. And the most important part, and I, I, this is a very, very important aspect of uh, the trading psychology, okay, for all you new traders, you will get, you're going to go on a magical run. The, the longer you trade, you're going to go on a magical run. And I will tell you this, no matter how long you trade, you're going to go on a magical funk, okay? You're going to go into a funk that nothing works, okay? Every single trade you're going to put on is wrong. And then there's going to be something in between, okay? And that's what your trading career is. But it, it's so incredibly important that any day that you are mentally frustrating, you're burning mental equity, it's so darn important that you just forget about it. It sucks. It's the worst. I can't believe it happened. It's over, right? The more you dwell on it, the more you think about it and not let go, 
the more you're going to be frustrated. And the worst possible scenario for you, it's going to be, you're going to, it's going to spill over for the next day. Okay. It happens to everybody. Okay. I don't care how long you've been trading. It happens to everybody. Uh, there's a buzzsaw, right? There's a mythical buzzsaw, the market guy buzzsaw. Everybody runs into it. Today was my day. Short memory. It sucks. So I'm just curious, guys. I usually don't make these all, at least not requests, but if you guys could be so kind, comment at the bottom of the page. I'm just curious. What do you guys think it's worse? And missing that A plus trade uh, or, or getting the trade, screwing it up, not necessarily screwing it up, messing it up, losing money. And then again, the worst part of it is you can't even get better mentally because you don't even know why you lost. So please, if you could be so kind, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, going into tomorrow, look, it's, it's a tired market. It's an aggressive market. Everything in between, right? Everything in between. Look, anything could happen. You see what's going on right now uh, with Tesla after the close. Um, I haven't looked, obviously I haven't read news because this is actually happening as I'm recording it. So I'm going to watch it to downside channels tomorrow. Again, if you look at the daily chart, there's some big levels on Tesla, right? That 58 level, right? 58 level from the day before, the 52 level, the rising 750. So any close tomorrow below 750, you have a lot of downside, right? You have an incredible, large, huge, huge downside potential in this trade. But again, it has to play out organically. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas for tomorrow. I, again, I'm very, I'm gonna have an extra cup of coffee. I'm still having coffee now, but I think I'm gonna have an extra one. I don't drink, I don't smoke. My only vice is venting and I do it pretty well. So let's talk about, uh, let's definitely talk about some ideas uh, for tomorrow, okay? Um, I, I think there's some, gonna be some value. Well, the value that we saw today, matter of fact, um, we saw a lot of really good remounts. There were some really good aggressive pivots but we saw some really, really aggressive remounts. I think tomorrow, when, you, when you're kind of in a market that is very, very strong and very, very weak at the same time, I think the value is remounting of ranges. And all you guys in the live webinar saw this today over and over and over again. They work incredibly well. So I kind of want to concentrate on that just because I think that's where to me the value is. But let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. Uh, for all you guys who don't trade beta, let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. Um, I kind of like this Wi-Fi, okay? I kind of like this Wi-Fi stock, big, big, long distribution. Um, I think this area here, 13, you know, 1350, roughly around the 1350 area. This is a distribution going back from uh, November the 6th. This looks pretty good here. Um, I still like NOW. Again, I think the stock uh, test highs. Any dip buy into rising 60 minute support, uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, this little one, uh, HIMX, um, you know, the daily chart had a big, big run. The daily chart breaks out around 483, 484. The reason why I'm bringing this up, uh, there was a call buyer that came in for, he bet, let's see here, I think it was 1,500 contracts uh, on the weekly five calls, right? So on the weekly five calls expiring uh, Friday, so you have a two-day rental, 1,500 times. It's a pretty unusual bet, so keep an eye on this thing uh, as well. And um, yeah, I, you know, every, everything, else, everything else is beta. Uh, everything else is beta for tomorrow. Uh, so guys, please get to morning strategy. Uh, again, for me, this is very, very therapeutic. I know, I know a lot of you guys don't have anybody to talk to, um, which is, which is, which is really a shame because again, guys, you can't keep this stuff in. Okay. You can't keep this stuff in because it's going to just tear at you and tear at you. Again, the one thing that we've established with, with the live webinar, everybody has my phone number. Everybody texts me. We email each other in nausea, 10 30, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, and we're each other's support system because again, we're, we're not robots, man. We, we bleed, we cry, we screw up, we, we do great. But the most important part is we have each other. And that's the most important part of any uh, global trading family. So guys have a great night. Hopefully tomorrow will be a lot, uh, a really good value. And with God's help, I hope that this helped each other, everybody out. And hopefully we'll have a good day tomorrow. Take care guys. Have a great day. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.